Hey y'all, it's Josh with Ernie's Roots. On this video, I'll be talking about Ernie. We got him last night from our uh, pastor's family. Our car. His mom passed away and uh, left him orphaned. So we're gonna try to put him on uh, Clora. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. I'm gonna show the uh, clip from last night and then uh, I'll go into more detail about calf sharing and stuff and about milk cow having a milk cow um so i'm gonna let him out introduce them for a little bit and then i'll just yap for a little bit so stay tuned okay so it is about six o'clock friday evening and we just got home from going and picking up this little bottle bull from um our pastor's farm actually and we are going to try to graft him onto cora so that we can calf share with him and um, not have to stress out so much about her like getting mastitis and milking her out. And if we've got something come up and not have time to milk her, then the, he'll take care of it. So, in the back of a Tahoe in a dog pen, this is Ernie. Come here, little guy. <coughs> And it's raining tonight, so we were going to introduce him tonight, but we don't want him out in the rain. And so we're going to just put him on the trailer and let him stay dry overnight and kind of just get used to his bearings. And then they, um, Josh will introduce him in the morning. <laughs> Good night, buddy. All right, so there's Clora opening the gate, letting her in. Come on, Clover. Alright, opening it up. See what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm about to get, I'm about to get him down. Last time we did this, it was unsuccessful. We calf shared. Uh, we milked Cora for 16 months straight. We weaned her first calf, Dandy, which is there. We got another calf and put on her, and she didn't like it. It had horns. She'd kick it and stuff. It, it rammed her in the side. She didn't like it. So we ended up having to put her in the head catch and get the calf to suck. So I'm hoping we don't do that with this one, but we will see. She's kicking, so this probably is not gonna work. We may have to do this every time. May have to hobble in her. There's a hobble right there. So this is the plan as of right now. I have made this pen bigger. Got a water tank right there. And Phil's going up to go get a hay bale to stick in the corner and gonna leave them in this pen for a couple of days, see if they get acquainted better. Uh, and also all my milk and stuff's right here to milk Cora. If it doesn't work, I have to bottle feed the calf. Uh, the other two options, I pondered them was take them up to the barn up there and it could have worked but all my milk and stuff's here and we got an ai cora and dandy monday so they need to really be together uh, for that process <clears throat> and then we're in the same pasture dandy's right there um, other option was the mobile sheet pen, which I really wanted to do this one. Uh, I think it could have could work. You know, it's movable. Put the calf and claw in there, or Ernie. But the issue with it was I got to open this gray gate and those red gates to get them the claw over here to melt. And there's two bulls over there. Would they bust in to get to her? 
when she goes into heat. I don't want her bred to the Hereford or breed or AI on her to uh, Guernsey. Uh, so that posed some issues. So we got them, got them in here and gonna see what happens. Looks like the calf just got su done sucking. So I may have to clean Chlora out. All right, so calf's got done sucking. Chlora's bag has still got milk in it. <clears throat> so I'm about to milk her out. Now, the reason why I let the calf suck first is because we, we, we know we've been getting about a gallon and a half, two gallons of milk every morning from Chlora. So I'll let the calf suck, kind of see how much it took. When I get done, I'll know. And uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna milk, in the morning, I'm gonna milk Chlora first. And then kind of judge how much I need to leave in the bag and let her clear, let Ernie clear her out. If there ain't any milk in the bag to help reduce uh, mastitis. Uh, so I'm gonna try to talk and do this at the same time. Maybe a bad idea. Y'all got a good view of Chlor's butt, so just bear with it. Uh, on Kylie's clip, she uh, she talked about calf sharing and what it is. I'm gonna try to hit more on that and why we do it. Uh, so calf sharing is what we do. And we wouldn't really be able to do a family milk cow without calf sharing because of our schedules. And if you're someone who wants to get a milk cow, calf sharing is the way to go. Um, with us, let me, hit, let me go back and hit on kind of what is calf sharing. That's when you leave the calf on the cow. And when you want to get milk, at night, what we do is at night we put the calf up so the milk builds up. And then the next morning, we milk the cow and then put the calf back on the cow to clean her up and leave it for the rest of the day. And at night, put the calf up. And on days when we don't want to milk, got something going on, we we'll to go on vacation, we just leave the calf on the cow. It's just like a regular cow you see out down the road, Angus cow with our babies. They, they do their thing and uh, don't have to worry about it. So we weaned uh, Clora's calf about two weeks ago and I was milking every morning. No break. That cold weather come through for about five, six days, freezing weather. Uh, I was out here bundled up milking and the way you milk is these two fingers stick out and they about froze off. So I've been pondering what to do. Uh, get another calf like we got here, or really was leaning towards a milking machine. Those are like $1,600. Uh, just couldn't swing that right now, especially with just milking one cow. If we were doing two, when Danny, we're about to AI them two, Cora and Dandy, and when they drop in nine months, we may do a milk machine then. Oh, um, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, so back to calf sharing and <clears throat> how it works for us. So we're homebodies who, who, when we're here, we work hard. We're on the farm, always doing something. I mean, every day, every weekend, there's always something going on. And we're here. So we work hard, but we play hard too. We like to vacation and travel and see the world. We got a map in our kitchen with pinpoints where all we've been. We like to travel. Uh, that's like our reward. Get away, relax, don't think about what's here. Uh, to do that, we have to cash share with the milk cow. And then we got to plan, really plan things out. So when we're gone, there's not a lot to do. Our fr friends and family who tend to the animals, there's not a lot they have to do while we're gone. We have systems in place where pigs, we have pigs, you don't have to water or feed them every, but every five or seven days. Um, so we have systems in place that are kind of self-sufficient. That's what, that's what we like. Because we like to travel, plan stuff. So if you're someone who wants to get a milk cow, I'd look into that. 
There's a uh, book, really, I recommend it, reading it first. It's called uh, Keeping a Family Milk Cow. So before we got into this, we read that book. And then there's another one called The Devil and the Milk. And that's more on the uh, the history of dairy and uh, kind of the political war on it. Kind of opens your eyes to a bunch of stuff. We read them too. And uh, got a lot of information off that. And there's a website called rawmilk.com. So those are uh, three good sources to try to check out before getting into it. But, uh, so that, <clears throat> that's one thing why people shy away from um, doing a milk cow is the commitment. It is finicky, it is hard work. She gets much status, it's, you gotta milk it out two, three times a day, we, we've done that. Uh, sometimes it, if you can't treat it naturally, you gotta do antibiotics. We've had to do that, we try not to, but when it comes to the health of the animal, we gotta do antibiotics. We're not opposed, absolutely opposed to antibiotics. Oh, uh, but yeah, it's kind of finicky. It's a learning process, but it's doable. And we promote others to be self-sufficient. If you got the means to do this, do it yourself instead of buying it from us. But if you don't, buy it from us or somebody like us, a small farm. <clears throat> it's doable, but it's doable. And another thing, like during the uh, the pandemic in 2020, when, when we were stuck here, at home, grocery shelves were going bare. This provides you food, a lot of different. I think water's overflowing. I gotta go stop. All right, I'm back. The water was overflowing. Uh, I guess this is my version of a front porch talk, so I'm milking a cow. Um, go back to the self-sufficiency thing, the pandemic. So, back in 2020, you know, when everything went crazy, we was all stuck at home, grocery shelves went bare. Uh, still today, things are kind of iffy. Stuff running, running low, prices high. So if you got a milk cow, one milk cow, a couple of acres, that's all you need. You got raw milk, you got butter, sour cream, yogurt. Milk cow can feed your cat, not to mention your family, your dog. Pigs you can fertilize your plants. We've done that with the extra milk. So many different options with the milk cow. Oh, uh, and then you throw a chicken in there with the eggs. Your family's got food on the table. You ain't got to worry about what's going on politically in the world. Just go in your backyard and make you some food. So we're very pro self-sufficiency. Less you depend on grocery store, the better. If you don't have the means to do that, find your local person, local farmer, and get it. Support them. So another thing people shy away from a milk cow, and this is probably the main one, is it's been hammered in our heads for decades now by science that raw milk consumption isn't safe. It's not fit for human consumption. Well, I digress. Humans have been consuming raw milk for thousands of years. Uh, we've been consuming it for five years. It's a lie. You can look more into it. <clears throat> Read that book, Devil in the Milk. Talks a whole lot more about it. I'm not going to go into all that right here. Uh, but it is false. Look it up for yourself. Uh, we... Now we, we don't consume raw milk from a grain fed cow. We will consume raw milk from a grass fed cow that's been on pasture, uh, had salt, mineral, all the natural stuff, salt and minerals, all that. But not a feedlot, concrete floor, grain fed cow. The reason being, this cliff note version, is the cow's ruminant was not, was not developed to consume grain. <clears throat> Now, we're not opposed to feeding a cow grain, but feeding a grain causes issues with, with the cow, cause health issues. Their bodies not, were not developed to, to consume it, but consuming it helps add on weight. So if it's a cow that you're gonna feed out, 
a grain grain beef. It's not gonna be a long-term animal on the farm. Feed it grain. But Clora here and our sheep are long-term animals on the farm. We name them. They're not, we're not, they're not for food. We name them. So we want them to be, have the best health possible. So our animals, our rumen animals that were created to consume grass, plants, we feed them, we don't give them grain because we don't want to weaken their immune systems. We want to build that up so we don't have to feed them, give them antibiotics and all that kind of stuff. We want a healthy animal to reduce the, the need of antibiotics. But if it came time to, if didn't, something went south and it determined the health of the animal for antibiotics, we would choose antibiotics. So my, my phone dropped and I got a little off there for a minute, got sidetracked. Um, so yeah, if you're one's concerned with this, oh, our tail smacked me, uh, the safety side of it, you could uh, pasteurize it yourself. You put it on the stove, heat it up. But if you're doing it for the health benefit, that kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, the pasteurization kills all the healthy stuff in the milk, which you want. Uh, when you pasteurize, you'll pretty much be left with chalk water, which is similar to what you find in the store because that's been pasteurized and had stuff fortified into it, added back. So all the good stuff gets killed. Um, but you can do it, whatever floats your boat. But yeah, so that's my little uh, back porch talk, milking the cow. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you got any questions, Hit us up. We'll be glad to talk about it. Uh, want you in some directions. Uh, so until next time, peace.